Ma'am, we are live now. I request okay. your permission to start with the session now. Okay, sure. Thank you, ma'am. Hari Om, everyone. A warm welcome to twenty fourth session of Higher Anatomy, a lecture series for the first year BMS student. The exclusive sessions will be taken up by the eminent speakers of anatomy across the country for a period of thirty days, which started from twenty third of June and will be running up to twentieth of July. Before starting the session, let me introduce you to Jignesha. Jignesha is a pan India platform of Irish fraternity led by the student community of Bharat and was initiated by ABVP in the year nineteen ninety eight. Its motto is Learn Irish to Practice Irish. It involves empowering Irish students from campus to communities, bridging the gap between Irish students and policymakers as well as administrative authorities, connecting every aspect of Irish, including students, academicians, practitioners, scientists, industrialists, and hospitals, all under one umbrella. Think globally, act locally. In last two decades, our efforts were to strengthen the Irish education system and boost confidence among Irish students. Jignasa initiated various programs in different parts of the country, from grassroots to international platforms, through discussions, study circles, seminars, workshops, and conferences. Let me list a few initiatives undertaken by Jignasa, starting with study circles, lecture series on specific topics, free medical camps, social health status survey, hands-on training workshops, conferences to explore and learn unique aspects of Ayurveda. Interaction with eminent vidyas and academicians, brainstorming sessions with high stalwarts, policy makers, and key stakeholders of high systems, national arogya expo and international conference, national level seminars, medicinal plant visits, pharmaceutical visits, agitations for the demands of high student community, private internship program for interested students to learn with acharyas, interaction with the traditional healers, and visits to explore regional flora. Online mock tests, social awareness campaigns on various issues, campaigns for the promotions of various concepts of high system for social welfare like Swarna Bindu Prashana Camp, Astro Shatatar Yoga, Group Surya Namaskar, and Yoga competitions. Free healthcare assistance to people through local governing bodies during natural calamities and accidents were also provided by Jignesa. In our last last session, more than 300 students joined for the live session and asked their queries regarding the subject and examination. And so far, we are proud enough to say. That we have received almost sixteen thousand views on our channel for higher anatomy sessions. Vidya Namanarisya Rupa Madhikam Prachana Gupta Madhanam. We have seen the inability of a common student to afford huge amounts on commercial study platforms, despite their jignasa, the burning desire to learn. Jignasa is here to give a helping hand, learn anatomy with experts, and all we need is your immense interest to learn. Today, we have Dr. Sajina P S Ma'am, B M S M D, Assistant Professor Rachana Sherry, Ra, S D M Institute of Ayurveda and Hospital, Bengaluru. Ma'am has completed B.Sc. Optometry in Calicut Medical College and her B.M.S. U.G. from J.S.S. Ayurveda Medical College and Hospital Mysore and her P.G. from Alwas Ayurveda Medical College Moodbidre. Ma'am has Ma'am is a gold medalist in M.D. Ayu uh, Rachana Sharira. Ma'am has done over eight embalming procedures. Ma'am has preserved more than fifty specimens. And has attended many seminar and workshops. Ma'am has done paper and poster presentation in Pushya National Symposium on Rasayana topics, Swarna Prashana, and Elixir of Mental Health. Also in Anvikshi 2019 National Seminar, the topic was female genital aging in Eden fact. Ma'am has done poster presentation in Charaka Vidyana Chitra poster competition, the topic was Nidra. Ma'am has competed in Samsidhi 2021 International Web Conference, and the topic was reproductive health. Ma'am has also competed in Jignasa International Conference. The topic was Rajaswala Paricharya and Implement in Inflate Infertility. Ma'am has done research publications in concept of Garbha Sambhav Samagri in Infertility, a critical review. A unilateral uter uter ureter fissures, a cadaveric study. And also done uh, research publications in Garbha Sambhav Samagri in Infertility, an observational study. Also done research paper publications in anatomical variability of the superior belly of homohyoid muscle and its clinical re re relevance. Ma'am, we are glad to glad to have you on the session today, ma'am, and we welcome you to the session. And to each and everyone who is watching this, we hope you find this helpful, ma'am. I now I request you to carry forward with the session. Okay, Karthik. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, a warm good evening to one and all. First of all, I would like to congratulate the entire uh, Jignasa team for their initiation uh, to Ayur Anatomy lecture series, uh, conducting these uh, different different topics in uh, daily. Some days they are uh, conduct uh, they conducted more than two topics also. So anyway, congratulations the entire team Jignasa, and I am expecting coming years also. 
like uh, same um, topic uh, same uh, subjects and different different subjects uh, and with uh, new ideas and all and uh, uh, also thank you uh, kartik for the introduction and also uh, considering me a part of this uh, lecture series okay so today the topic assigned me uh, is eyeball and the remaining uh, sense organs already we uh, completed in previous uh, sessions they completed so remaining one is there that is eyeball uh, so we can uh, go directly to the eyeball am i audible karthik karthik yes ma'am okay so yes ma'am you are audible you are audible okay okay i'm going to share my ppt okay yes ma'am so is it visible ppt is visible kartik yes, the ppt is okay. visible ma'am okay okay shall we start Yes, ma'am. So, yes, ma'am. You can. Okay. 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 So, eyeball. As per uh, NCSM syllabus, it may come for uh, LAQ that is long answer question, and SAQ that is five mark question, and also uh, it may ask uh, as MCQ multiple choice question. So, uh, we can do a small revision related to eyeball. Okay. So, first we will see how we can write if they ask. long answer question the eyeball or uh, globe of the eye uh, first we ha you have to do uh, you have to write a small introduction okay where it is locating and what is the shape of the eyeball and what are the outermost structures like that you have to give a small introduction so the eyeball or globe of the eye it occupies the orbital cavity so where is orbital cavity it is the bony pair uh, pair of bony cavity and the main contents of orbital cavity is eyeball and associated with its muscles also you can see in orbital cavity nerves vessels lymphatics and also uh, some amount of fat and uh, the part of lacrimal apparatus so this fat some amount of fat is there why this fat is required means uh, this fat it will give a, a cushion effect to this uh, total orbital cavity and the eyeball can move freely into the orbital cavity so in between this fat and eyeball there is a small membranous sac that is known as fascia bulbi or tenens capsule with the help of this fascia bulbi and tenens capsule the globe can move very easily into the orbital cavity and this orbital cavity it is nothing but a pyramidal space as i already mentioned the contents and it has roof floor and medial and lateral walls okay so you can expect the same question in osteology orbit okay so coming to the shape of the eyeball in many uh, textbook we can see it is spherical in shape but actually the eyeball is not exactly spherical it is just like a globe we can call it as oblate spheroid it is a oblate spheroid in shape okay then uh, this eyeball we can uh, we can take two spheres segment of two spheres that is anteriorly a small sphere and posteriorly a large sphere so anterior small that is 1/6 sphere it is made up of cornea and the posterior 5/6 that is nothing but sclera so like this you can give a small introduction related to eyeball if you want further you can write the poles axis and equator of the eyeball so you can see one diagram there the eyeball consists of two poles mainly two poles and the main two axes are there that is optical axis and visual axis and equator two the poles are nothing but uh, Uh, there are two in number that is anterior pole and posterior pole the anterior pole that is how it will form means it is the central point of corneal curvature 
the cor the central point of the cornea where the anterior fold will form similarly opposite that is the scleral curvature maximum convexity of the sclera where it is posterior fold so there the uh, posterior pole will form and the line which is joining the anterior pole to posterior pole you can take it as optical axis and i mentioned one more axis that is visual axis that is for visual perception that is coming from anterior pole to fovea centralis that is just lateral to the posterior pole and one more thing is that equator that is uh, equator is the uh, imaginary line around the total eyeball that is equidistant from these two poles you can see one green line is there in that diagram that is nothing but the equator of the eyeball so you can mention this also in introduction part that is two poles are there anterior and posterior pole mainly two axes are there visual axis and optical axis and one more thing that is equator coming to the dimensions of an an adult eyeball normal adult eyeball in rough you can take anterior posterior horizontal vertical together you can take 24 millimeter okay if you are taking individual then you can take anterior posterior diameter is 24 millimeter horizontal it is just less than that of anterior anterior posterior diameter that is 23.5 millimeter vertical diameter is 23 millimeter circumference is 75 millimeter and volume 6.5 ml and weight is about 7 gram okay so in general you can take it is 24 millimeter or 2.5 centimeter so this also you can mention in the introduction part first introduction then you can mention the pole axis and equator then you can explain the dimensions of an adult eyeball normal dimensions okay so why this dimension is important means you can see one more diagram is there the normal eye you can see how the normal eye in this diagram the parallel rays which is coming from infinity which will passing through the different refractive media and it will focus on the retina that is the normal uh, visual uh, vision process but in some cases that means in if the anterior posterior diameter is more than 24 millimeter that is uh, it may extend up to 29 or 30 millimeter that time what will happen means the total eyeball become large that time the parallel rays which is coming from infinity it will passes through different refractive media and it will focus in front of the retina and that condition is known as myopia and we can correct this with the concave glasses you can see the second diagram and one more condition is there that is now previously i told the diameter which is increased that is up to 29 to 30 millimeter now if the diameter under the posterior diameter is decreased just like 20 19 millimeter that time what will happen means the eyeball become small in this case what will happen means the rays which will come in uh, infinity it may focus in front uh, be behind the retina in myopic cases it will focus in front of the retina in this case it will focus behind the retina and such condition is known as hypermetropia and you can correct with the convex lenses so these are the two refractive errors uh, clinically why this dimension is important uh, because of this refractive errors it is important and you you should remember always the normal diameter is 24 millimeter or 2.5 centimeter this may ask as mcq okay so up to this you can make it as an introduction point then coming to the main thing that is coats or tunics or layers of the eyeball okay so the eyeball mainly consists of three layers or three coats or three tunics they are outermost one coat is there middle or intermediate one coat is there and innermost one coat is there so outer the coat is also known as it is fibrous coat it is made up of dense collagen fibers that that is why it is known as fibrous coat okay then middle it is or intermediate it is vascular coat it is also known as uveal tissue or uveal tract and the innermost coat that is known as nervous coat and it is it consists of retina so we will see one by one what are those so fibrous coat outermost coat as i already mentioned the eye which consists of a segment of two spheres 
so here the anterior portion that is small portion which is made up of uh, anterior one sixth which is forms with the help of a cornea okay this cornea is very transparent okay and posterior five sixth that is very tough and opaque and hard uh, structure that is known as sclera so these two are the fibrous coat and the junction between these two cornea and sclera it is known as sclerocorneal junction or limbus this you can expect as mcq the junction between cornea and sclera is also known as limbus or sclerocorneal junction and here this sclera which is derived from uh, dural sheath optic fibers of the dural sheath okay coming to the vascular cord that is also known as intermediate cord or uveal tissue okay and this is pigmented it is exactly like the skin of a dark gray if you uh, look at dark gray the cord is exactly like a dark gray even the jelly also you can see there okay the main function of the uh, cord uh, this uveal uh, tissue is nothing but the nutrition which will give which will supply the nutrition to the innermost layer of the retina and this consists of mainly three parts from anterior to posterior iris ciliary body and choroid and this choroid which is uh, derived from the pea and arachnoid matter coming to the nervous coat that is nothing but retina it is the innermost layer delicate thin uh, structure and this retina which is uh, derived from it is a part of the brain and it which is derived from the diencephalon so that's why uh, retina is the part of brain and uh, it is developed from diencephalon that's why retina is an example of a moving brain so this also uh, you can uh, underline this point uh, may ask in mcq that is dash is the uh, dash is an example of a moving brain retina you can consider and also uh, the vascular coat what are the uh, structures which is present in the vascular coat from anterior to posterior you can see iris ciliary body and choroid coming to the individual description of this uh, tunics first one the outer fibrous coat as i already mentioned that is consist of sclera and cornea so the posterior 5/6 that is nothing but sclera it is very tough opaque and it is made up of dense fibrous tissue and because of uh, this outermost covering this uh, sclera the main function of sclera is protecting the intraocular contents and also the name sclera means sclerose that is hard so it will because of this uh, uh, hardness or uh, its opaqueness it will maintain the shape of the eyeball these are the main functions of the sclera here again uh, you can expect some mcqs uh, the thickest part of the sclera that is nothing but near the entrance of the optic nerve that is the thickest part of the sclera and thinnest part of the sclera is just about 6 mm behind the limbus limbus is nothing but the junction between cornea and sclera why it is thinnest means where the recti muscles are inserting in this area and coming to the thickest it is near the entrance of the optic nerve it is also known as the weakest part it is thickest and weakest why it is weakest means because of the uh, entering of this optic fibers there will be a formation of small small perforations okay and this is just like a sieve so that area is known as lamina cribrosa because of the passage of optic nerve this area become c and that area is known as lamina cribrosa that's why it is very weakest and it is thickest and here one clinical anatomy is there uh, in chronic glaucoma cases so what is glaucoma it is nothing but the uh, intraocular pressure increasing condition okay in this cases what will happen means the pressure inside the eyeball which will exerted into the lamina cribrosa and this lamina cribrosa it will push backward and there will form the cupping of the disc and you can see with the help of fundus while uh, checking the fundus fundus view uh, this cupping you will get okay so that's why it is very 
weakest and it is thickest also coming to the uh, sclerocorneal junction that i already mentioned it is also known as limbus and this sclerocorneal junction uh, if you see inside there is a circular canal and that canal is known as canal of schlem or sinus venous sclerae so here uh, where the aqueous drainage will happen in this canal that is the main uh, function of this canal and uh, in beginning slide already i mentioned the smooth covering is there that is in between uh, fat and uh, the sclera uh, there is a membranous sac that is known as fascia bulbae or tenens capsule this will cover the total uh, sclera okay and one more after sclera uh, interior next the structure is choroid so the space between sclera and choroid it is known as perichoroidal space and this space contains some cellular tissue and that is known as lamina fusca and i already mentioned it is fused with the dural sheath of optic nerve posteriorly the sclera is totally it is fused with the sheath of optic nerve and it is derived from this sheath so that is about sclera you can expect uh, some mcqs uh, i already mentioned all those mcqs in uh, in this sclera topic okay now coming to the structures piercing the sclera in that diagram you can see mainly the optic nerve then ciliary nerves arteries and anterior ciliary arteries also the four or five vena uh, verticosa that is also known as choroid veins these all are piercing the sclera and also uh, this um, recti muscles all these it will pierce the sclera coming to the uh, sclera how it will give nourishment already we mentioned uh, the ciliary nerves anterior ciliary arteries all these are uh, piercing the sclera but still sclera is avascular okay and episclera that is the loose connective tissue in between sclera and conjunctiva this also avascular so here also you can expect the loose connective tissue between sclera and conjunctiva that is nothing but epi sclera so coming to the next fibrous coat that is cornea we already mentioned that is anterior 1/6 it is forming uh, the structure is known as cornea so cornea is very transparent and it is avascular even though it is avascular it is nourished with the help of lymph lacrimal fluid and uh, also some uh, this uh, the aqueous humor all these are nourishing the avascular cornea and it is just like a watch glass uh, above the sclera okay and the most of the refraction which is taking place in this cornea because the total refractive power of the eyeball is 60 to 63 in that 45 diopter which is taking in the cornea cornea itself and remaining it is by lens and other structures okay and this corneal curvature is more in uh, early ages as age advances this will diminish and the thickness of the uh, cornea the center it is 0.5 to 0.6 mm and periphery it is 1 to 1.2 uh, mm coming to the structure of the cornea uh, there are mainly six layers present in the cornea in many textbook you can see only five layers but one more added Uh, in 2013, uh, by scientist, uh, his name is uh, Dua. So that layer is also known as Dua's layer or pre-decimate membrane. So we will see one by one what are the corneal layers. So first layer is epithelium. It is very smooth and it is made up of stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. Next layer is Bowman's membrane. And it is also known as anterior elastic lamina. So this Bowman's membrane. Uh, if it is any damage to happen to this bowman's membrane it won't regenerate but remaining all layers like epithelium stroma these all will regenerate but bowman's membrane it won't regenerate and the next layer is substantia propria or stroma it is very parallel arrangement you can see in, in this layer and it is the bulkiest layer and the next one is predecimens as i already mentioned it is also known as duas membrane tree means before decimates membrane 
and the next one fifth one is decimates membrane it is also known as posterior elastic lamina and the last one is endothelium so while writing laq you can mention this five layers of the uh, cornea and even in mcq sometimes they may ask the layers of cornea so sorry six layers of cornea because in many textbook it is mentioned as five but it is actually six that is uh, including duas mem layer or three decimates membrane so the total layers are six in number and uh, in previous slide i mentioned cornea is transparent so this transparency is maintaining by the uh, mainly by these layers first one is the smooth epithelium the next one is the parallel arrangement of the stromal layer and also it is avascular that's why this all will make the cornea transparent Coming to the clinical anatomy, you can write one or two clinical anatomy in this fibrous coat. That is, uh, as cornea is uh, transparent and avascular, you can do the drafting, corneal grafting. Okay, so that procedure is known as keratoplasty and uh, any injury to the cornea, it may leads to corneal opacity. You can see one diagram is there, hazy cornea is there. That is nothing but corneal opacity and refractive errors. Uh, so I mentioned two refractive errors, that is myopia and hypermetropia. One more is there, that is astigmatism, in that the uh, light rays which will focus in different meridian because of the corneal irregularity. It is the one reason because of corneal irregularity, it will focus multiple um, places and that condition is known as astigmatism. We can clear with the cylindrical lens. So that also you can mention here and uh, next condition uh, related to sclera is scleritis uh, that is nothing but the inflammation of the sclera and uh, conjunctivitis that is the inflammation of the conjunctiva you can see the next diagram it is uh, full reddish eye watering all these are the symptoms of the scleritis and conjunctivitis so you can quote all this clinical anatomy while writing the fibrous code coming to the next code that is you will tract or middle coat or you will tissue or uh, it is the intermediate coat. From anterior to posterior, it can be divided into three parts. They are iris, ciliary body and choroid. So we will see one by one. First, we will see the choroid. As I already mentioned, this is just like a uh, skin of the dark green okay and along with gel you can see that okay so this is the pigmented layer and it is extend from optic disc to aura serrata in that diagram you can see from optic disc to aura serrata is nothing but the anteriorly retina it will form say wavy appearance that is aura serrata from optic disc to aura serrata the choroid is extending and it is just like a sandwich in between sclera and uh, retina you can see the choroid so this choroid inner surface is very smooth and brown and also it is inner inner surface it is closely attached to the pigment uh, epithelium of the retina then what about outer surface because it is uh, already mentioned it is just like a sandwich so outer it is uh, joined with the sclera and inner it is attached to the retina and uh, structurally it consists of four layers that is supracoroid lamina La, it is also known as lamina fusca that is in between sclera and choroid there is a space perichoroidal space and which contain the tissue that is known as lamina fusca next after lamina fusca next you can see the vascular lamina where you can see the anterior and post uh, anterior ciliary arteries and also the vena verticosa all those things you can get, see in the vascular lamina after la vascular lamina the next one is the choriocapillary lamina the main function of the choriocapillary lamina is nothing but it is giving the nutrition to the innermost retina and last one which is attached to the retina that is brex membrane or basal lamina this may ask in viva what is brex membrane where you can see that time you can uh, uh, answer it is present is the uh, innermost layer of the choroid so this is the structure of choroid next we will see the next middle one structure that is ciliary body so ciliary body uh, that is the extension from the choroid it is the very thickest, uh, thickened part of the uveal tract. Okay, so anteriorly it is continuous with iris and posteriorly with choroid. So in between choroid and iris, 
you can see the ciliary body and uh, it consists of ciliary process and, and uh, ciliary muscles and this uh, muscles which will help for the accommodation that is for the near vision and uh, the and the ciliary muscles are known as muscles of accommodation or muscles for near vision so this may uh, you can expect in smcq the muscles of accommodation is nothing but ciliary muscles and uh, you can see that diagram it is triangular in cross section and this uh, posterior part or it is attached to the vitreous surface it is very smooth and black it is known as pars plana and anteriorly it is rigid because of this muscles and this processes almost 70 ciliary process you can see anteriorly and this part is known as pars plicata and this uh, ciliary muscles are uh, either it is longitudinal or radial or circular these are the three types of ciliary muscles you can see in this ciliary body coming to the iris here iris is uh, the name indicate the it is coming from the greek word iris is rainbow the meaning of iris is rainbow and you can see this iris in the anterior part of the uva tract first it will start with iris then ciliary body then choroid so i mentioned iris is uh, the meaning is rainbow why it is rainbow the meaning why the name came because uh, the color of the iris which may be uh, in some people you can see blue some people you can see brown some you can see white because of that different different color uh, the name came iris okay and the color of the iris which is depends upon the number of pigment cells present in the iris if the uh, pigments are more then the iris will be brown if the pigments are scanty then the iris will be blue and if the pigments are absent, then the iris will be white. That is mainly you can see in the albinos. Okay. In uh, albinism, you can see white iris. That is due to the number of pigments are absent in iris. And this iris, which is placed vertically in front of the cornea and lens. This iris, which will divide the anterior segment of the eye as anterior chamber and posterior chamber and one more important structure you can see in the iris that is an ankle is there that is iridocorneal angle in between cornea and iris and where the uh, it is also known as angle of anterior chamber where the aqueous humor is draining and in iris one more thing you can see that is muscles of the iris there are two types of muscles sphincter muscles and dilator pupillae muscle this uh, dilated pupillae as name itself it will dilate the pupil okay so what is pupil pupil is nothing but it is a this iris will form a curtain like structure and in between middle of this uh, curtain like uh, iris there is a small opening at the center that is known as pupil it is always black in color okay so this dilated pupillae uh, it will innervated by sympathetic uh, nerves and this will dilate the pupil uh, when you are in sitting in dark place or else uh, in some uh, like um, mainly in dark places and all if it is very less that time uh, the pupil will be dilating and because of this dilator pupil and when you are um, going to light that time what will happen means the pupil will constrict that is due to this parasympathetic action and it is by uh, with the help of this sphincter muscles so there are two muscles sphincter and dilated pupillae muscles so this is about the iris and you can see some clinical anatomy like uh, total uveal infection if any infection to total uveal tissue uh, it is known as uveitis and i already mentioned this uh, ciliary muscles uh, which is also known as muscles of accommodation uh, how the action means you can see that diagram in first diagram uh, when you are reading or accommodating something or near vision that time what will happen means the ciliary muscles will contract when the ciliary muscles contract the ciliary muscles which will push the ciliary body everything forward that time this suspensory ligament it is nothing but it is also known as zonulocin which will relax that time 
the lens it will be more and more convex and it is for it lens it is more and more convex and bulge and it is for accommodating for near vision and opposite in far vision so here in far vision what will happen means when you are looking into far uh, that time the ciliary muscles relaxed and that time suspensory ligament it will become tense and the lens is more and more flat it is uh, when it is tense the lens it is uh, small and it will be lens will be more and more flat and it will be for uh, distant vision okay so these are the uh, two conditions it's the opposite action of the ciliary muscles and suspensory ligament and one more thing is the squint uh, that is nothing but the uh, one eye is fixing and other one is squinting eye is turned inward this is mainly due to the um, paralysis of extraocular muscles also this also you can uh, hear this uh, ciliary muscles also action also some convergent skins you can see so this is about the middle vascular cord you can expect some mcq here now coming to the segments and chambers of the eyeball why i am mentioning here means because uh, we already studied the two cords so uh, already i mentioned uh, the eyeball uh, is divided into in interiorly it is divided into two segments one is anterior segment and other one is posterior segment how it is dividing means with the help of lens you can see in that diagram after pupil one lens is there it is suspended with the help of suspensory ligament or zonulocin so posterior to lens there is one uh, big uh, segment is there that is known as posterior segment which con uh, containing the uh, vitreous humor and anterior to this lens that is known as anterior segment this anterior segment again divided into anterior chamber and posterior chamber with the help of iris that means in between cornea and iris the space is known as anterior chamber and behind the iris that is in between iris and lens the space is known as posterior chamber okay and this anterior segment totally you can see the aqueous humor and all the draining of aqueous humor is taking place by uh, taking place in the anterior segment of the eye so this also you can expect as uh, mcq uh, like anterior chamber what are the structures except this or else posterior uh, structures, uh, posterior segment of the eye, where a dash is present. Such questions you can expect. And the amount also, 0.25 ml aqueous in the anterior chamber, this more, and 0.06 ml aqueous in the posterior chamber. How the division? You can see in this diagram, it is very clear. The lens, which is divided by total eyeball, interiorly it is divided into anterior segment and posterior segment posterior segment is the large and which is filled with the vitreous humor and anterior segment that is anterior to the lens and it is this segment again divided into anterior chamber and posterior chamber in front of this iris that is in between cornea and iris that chamber is known as anterior chamber and behind the iris that is in between lens and iris that chamber is known as posterior chamber Coming to the last cord, that is retina or nervous cord or innermost layer. It is very thin and delicate layer. And this retina, uh, which is outermost, it is attached to the choroid. And innermost, it is uh, with the um, hyaloid membrane. That means there is a hyaloid fossa is present. Okay. Then... Uh, this retina which is divided into two that is outer pigment retina and inner nervous or neuro retina okay these two are uh, very adherent to each other so any like separation of these two uh, with any other pathological re uh, reason this may leads to partial blindness and you can see there is a circular pale area uh, from which the optic nerve is begin and that area it is almost 1.5 millimeter and that area is known as optic disc and this optic disc uh, which is devoid of rods and cones and uh, that's why it is known as physiological blind spot and it 
the depression which is present in the optic disc that is known as physiological cup or physiological blind spot and coming to the parts of the retina as i already mentioned the uh, retina which is which is divided into two that is neuro retina and pigment retina so this neuro retina you can see up to oreserata oreserata is the wavy structure which is seen anterior to the retina but this pigment retina it will extend up to ciliary body and iris and that is known as pars ciliaris retina or pars iridis retina that is only pigment retina but neuro retina it will extend up to oreserata and we discussed about the optic disc and its measurement may ask as mcq uh, measurement of the optic the diameter of the optic disc that is 1.5 mm and one more important structure is present there that is just uh, 3 mm lateral to the optic disc you can see in that diagram it is present in the posterior pole of the eye and just 3 mm lateral to the optic disc there is one more uh, area one more structure it is uh, yellow in color and that is known as macula lutea so why it is yellow color because of the xanthophyll xanthophyll pigment is present that's why lutea itself indicate it is yellow color so one more uh, structure that is macula lutea and the depression which is present in the macula that is known as fovea centralis and in this fovea centralis basement that is known as foveola where you can see only cones that's why this is the area for maximum acuity of vision so it is opposite to optic this uh, this physiological cup or physiological blind spot there the optic disc which is totally devoid of rods and cones here in uh, fovea uh, that can uh, contain the maximum cones that's why there will be a uh, discriminative vision or maximum acuity of the vision in this fovea centralis or foveola region and in retina you can see mainly uh, two types of uh, pigments that is rods and cones the rods uh, which is for scotopic vision and cones for the photopic vision and here one clinical anatomy this optic disc any edema to this optic disc it is known as papillary edema uh, this week you can diagnose with the help of uh, fundus uh, this one fundoscopy indirect or direct fund, uh, fundoscopy may help to reveal this papillary edema that is nothing but the edema which is present in the optic disc and also one more thing i explain while explaining sclera that is cupping of the optic disc due to the weakness of the lamina cribrosa due to the increase of the uh, intraocular pressure i mean to the arterial supply that is mainly central retinal artery which is the branch of uh, internal carotid artery ophthalmic artery ophthalmic artery is the branch of internal carotid artery so this central retinal artery is a, an end artery that is why any op uh, occlusion of this artery which may leads to the uh, sudden blindness or partial uh, visual loss so this is about the retina and coming to the layers of the retina uh, this again you can expect in a cmcq mainly there are 10 layers you can see i already mentioned that is uh, retina is divided into outer pigmented epithelium and uh, sorry outer pigmented uh, retina and inner neuro or nervous retina and the total layer of retina are 10 in number they are pigment epithelium layers of rods and cones you can see in that diagram then external limiting membrane then outer nuclear layer outer plexiform layer inner nuclear layer inner plexiform layer ganglion cell layer nerve fiber layer and the last one is internal limiting membrane these are the 10 layers of retina and outer layer which consist of uh, only rods and cones innermost layer it will start with the um, interneurons neuroglial cells and blood vessels all these things so these are the uh, layers of retina and total structure of retina coming to the clinical anatomy uh, already mentioned the retinal detachment these two layers of retina which is very adherent to each other if any pathological reason sometimes it may separate and that is condition is known as retinal detachment it may leads to loss of vision and uh, any occlusion to the central retinal artery or uh, central vein occlusion that is known as crao crvo and one more thing age related macular degeneration is 
as age advances, there will be degenerative changes in the macula, and this also leads to visual loss. These all uh, these four things which may leads to the um, blindness. So be careful um, about the innermost structure that is retina. So these are the total three layers of eyeball. So if they ask LAQ, you can make small uh, notes on all these tunics. Coming to the refractive media of the eye, this uh, if they ask LAQ, you can just mention what are those four uh, refractive medias. There are five, including retina. And from anterior to posterior, first the refraction take place in the cornea, then aqueous humor coming to lens, then last it will, uh, then next it will reach to the vitreous humor, last it will reach into the retina as an inverted image. Then uh, after that, when it will reach to the area, uh, vision area, then it will come back to the normal image. So this you can mention just the name. Uh, sometimes they may ask MCQ related to this. Uh, like uh, first uh, refractive error that already I mentioned cornea. Next one is acute humor. Uh, this is nothing but a clear fluid. While explaining the chambers, I told it is present only in the anterior segment of the eye. That is anterior segment is divided into anterior chamber and posterior chamber. How it is producing? It is secreted uh, from the capillaries in the ciliary process, then it will enter into the posterior chamber. From posterior chamber through pupil, that is nothing but the central opening of the iris. In between iris, there is an opening that is pupil. Through pupil, it will reach into the anterior chamber. From anterior chamber, iridoc through iridocorneal angle and canal of Schlem, it will reach into the anterior ciliary veins. Here again, uh, any increase of this uh, intraocular fluid which may lead to the uh, glaucoma. It is very uh, dangerous condition and which may lead to vision loss. Vision loss. Okay. And the normal amount of aqueous, it is 15 to 20 millimeter of mercury. If it is more than that, which may lead to the problem. And we can uh, measure this uh, intraocular pressure with the help of sheared stonometer. It is known as stonometry. Coming to the third refracting media, that is lens, you already you know, that is transparent and biconvex. And the total uh, dioptric power of the eye, that is 60 to 63, in that mean it is contributed by uh, cornea and remaining 15, it is uh, 45 by cornea and 15 diopter by lens. And it can be vary this dioptric power of the lens. Again, I may ask in the MCQ, the dioptric power of the lens, that is 15 diopter. Like eyeball, it has two poles, anterior and posterior poles, and diameter is one centimeter. And it is um, held in position with the help of suspensory ligament that is also known as zonulopsin. And this lens, already I mentioned, it is transparent. Sometimes as age advances or any other pathological condition, the transparency may lose. In that condition, uh, that time the lens become opaque and that condition is known as cataract. Only surgical removal, we can do cataract surgery, we can do and remove an artificial lens, we can replace in that place. So that is about lens and its clinical anatomy. And last one is vitreous body. While mentioning chambers, again, I mentioned this one, posterior segment of the inner chamber, posterior segment, that is posterior four-fifth of the eyeball, which is filled with the clear jelly colorless substance that is nothing but vitreous body. So that is vitreous. And coming to the appendages of the eye, this also, while writing LAQ, just mention the name and one, one or two sentences. That much is enough. No need to explain much. So that these are the uh, some of the appendages of the eye. In that, uh, you can consider conjunctiva, eyelid or palpebrae, lacrimal apparatus. These are the mean appendages of the eye. Conjunctiva is nothing but a uh, transparent mucous membrane. Again, uh, it is covered the sclera up to limbus. Okay. And where, uh, this covering the scleral or ocular part, conjunctiva, it is known as bulbar conjunctiva. The conjunctiva which is covering the palpebral region or lid region, that is known as palpebral conjunctiva. And the reflection of these two, it is known as conjunctival phonics or superior or inferior 
conjunctiva. And any inflammation of this conjunctiva, uh, it is known as conjunctivitis. It may be bacterial, viral, or any allergic reasons. I mean, to the eyelids, you can see in the diagram, first diagram, uh, normal eyelids, there are two in number, and it will give protection from injury, light, etc. And also, it will give moisture effect of the total uh, cornea and sclera. And some terminologies like a wrinkle, uh, medial canthus, lateral canthus, all this may ask in viva. And uh, along with that, some clinical anatomy that is in uh, eyeball, sorry, uh, eyelid, you can see some ciliary glands and mebomian glands. So any infection to the ciliary glands, which may lead to uh, uh, condition that is known as sty in second diagram. Uh, that means uh, third diagram, you can see one uh, small uh, pimple, like pus pointed pimple, that is known as sty. It is very painful condition. It will uh, mainly, it is present in the lid margin, just near to the eyelashes, very painful condition. And the second diagram, you can see on small cyst like that is nothing but the infection of the uh, tarsal gland tarsal gland which is present again in the lid there is a tarsal plate uh, this connect just like connective tissue and uh, it consists of glands many glands are there and infection of these glands tarsal glands which may leads to uh, calesion that condition is known as calesion okay and tarsal gland it is also known as mebomian gland so these are the some of the clinical anatomy of the eyelid and coming to the um, last appendage that is lacrimal apparatus. So here the lacrimal apparatus is nothing but the structure which is producing and maintaining the lacrimal fluid. It is starting from the lacrimal gland. You can see in that diagram it is an orbital part and palpebral parts are the lobes are there. From lacrimal gland, the lacrimal fluid is coming and it will reach into the conjunctiva. That is conjunctival sac. That is in between the lid and the conjunctiva, there is a sac that is known as conjunctival sac. From there, it will reach into the uh, lacrimal punctum. From punctum, it will reach into the lacrimal canaliculi. From canaliculi, it will reach into lacrimal sac. At last, it will reach into the nasolacrimal duct. So any infection or inflammation of this region, it is known as dacryocystitis. Here you can expect mean uh, MCQs like the length of the lacrimal canaliculi that is 10 millimeter and the length of the lacrimal sac that is uh, 12 millimeter and the nasolacrimal length uh, duct that is uh, almost 18 millimeter. So this such type of MCQ you can expect in this lacrimal apparatus. And also the clinical anatomy, that is nothing but dacryocystitis or, or else epiphora, excessive uh, lacrimation, all these things because of this uh, lacrimal apparatus and uh, any pathological conditions. Coming to the last one, that is extra ocular muscles. And I orbit, you can see mainly uh, two types of muscles, voluntary and involuntary. Involuntary are superior tarsal, inferior tarsal and orbitalis. And uh, voluntary muscles are, uh, there are seven in number, they are known as extra ocular muscles, that is four recti and two oblique and one is levator palpable superiorisis. So this recti and uh, oblique muscles which will do the movement of the eyeball and this levator palpable superiorisis, this will do the elevation of the lid. And uh, the original insertion, you should remember common tendinous ring is the origin for the recti muscles. And insertion, as I already mentioned, uh, is into the uh, scleral limbus region, just uh, near to the corneoscleral junction. Okay. So the actions also, you should remember, it may ask in viva. So these are the extraocular muscles and any paralysis of these extraocular muscles, which may uh, leads to skin or strabismus and one more condition is there involuntary rhythmic oscillation of this eyeball and that is known as nystagmus that is also due to this uh, paralysis or any injuries of this extraocular muscles and one more thing here you can expect uh, mcq that is uh, the nerve which is supplying the extraocular muscles that is a called so4 lr6 and remaining three that is superior oblique is supplied by fourth nerve that is trochlear nerve and the lateral rectus 
that is supplied by sixth nerve that is abducens and remaining all including levator palpebral superioris which is supplied by uh, third nerve that is oculomotor nerve so this you can expect as mcq so this is about uh, all about uh, the total eyeball i did a small revision i didn't explain much because uh, as i already mentioned we don't have enough time to explain each and everything so if laq come you can follow this one first you have to write a small introduction uh, like measurements uh, uh, where it is situating location and the shape all these things then you can go for the tunics of the eyeball uh, separately you have to explain each and every structure then last you can explain uh, the appendages and uh, refractive media so, along with the extraocular muscles and blood supply of thalamic artery and of thalamic vein and some of the clinical anatomy while explaining the codes i explain same you can follow while writing the uh, long answer questions and related to mcq i explain some of the uh, mcqs while explaining the structures and uh, some more uh, you can see here you can go through this mcq this ppt i will share to karthik and uh, he will share so you can go through almost 60 are there just go through this mcqs okay and uh, while writing laq uh, one important thing i miss that is you have to draw a neat labeled diagram of eyeball along with the while explaining sclera you can write the Uh, structure piercing the sclera and uh, layers of cornea layers of retina this also uh, you can include while writing laq so by this i am concluding today's section and thank you once again and all the very best for the exam going batch thank you so any queries you can ask related to eyeball thank you ma'am thank you for the elaborated the elaborated and knowledgeable session on uh, i um, now uh, shall we take a uh, few questions from uh, uh, shall we take few questions ma'am sir take thank you ma'am Uh, students we request you to post your questions in the chat box and i will be reading that out to ma'am okay any questions regarding the topic and uh, any questions regarding exam you can start posting in the chat box Ma'am, we have our first question. Okay. Uh, for eyeball, how many diagrams should we include if given for ten marks, and how much description should be given about each layer? This is the question, ma'am. Okay. For eyeball, uh, I'll share this PPT to uh, PPT to you, Karthik, and you can share this. Okay. So you can go through this total PPT. uh at, at least you have to draw three or four diagrams and that main diagram total structure of the eyeball first diagram and while explaining sclera you can include the diagram like structure structures piercing the sclera okay and while explaining cornea you can uh, write the diagram of corneal layers and in retina again you can draw the retinal layers and also uh, you can draw the extraocular muscles diagram okay and you just uh, check the time uh, manage the time and then uh, you can write all these diagrams and uh, description uh, for uh, layers you have to do more uh, descriptions uh, sclera cornea you have to give more uh, elaboration but in appendages and uh, refractive media you can write very less you can just mention the uh, what are the structures that much is enough Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, our next question. Uh, we have our next question, ma'am. The question is, ma'am, uh, DS layer. We have to mention or not? 
you can mention yes. as in uh, duas uh, duas member layer it is also known as pre decimates membrane just before uh, decimates membrane you can see this in between stroma and decimates membrane dua is the uh, name of the scientist okay so uh, it is um, i think it is uh, published in 2013 2013 after that all the ophthalmology textbook even uh, new edition of chaurasia uh, that is ninth edition you will get this layer so you can mention that one no problem thank you ma'am thank you ma'am uh, now moving on to our next question the question is ma'am should we write origin insertion and actions of extraocular muscles if eyeball is asked for laq ma'am again uh, depends upon your time if you have time just make a table and you can write in first column uh, origin first column the name of the muscles that is for recte different superior recte inferior recte like that then uh, next column you can go for the origin next insertion next action that is better i think you can score more marks or else you can uh, go for the diagram origin and insertion diagram either you can go for the uh, table form or else diagram that is also depends upon your time Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next question is, ma'am, a retinal layer should we remember details about each layer? Uh, the question is, should we details about uh, should we remember the details about each layer of retina? Uh, at least you should remember the name in order. Okay, first starting from uh, pigmented epithelium till the internal limiting membrane. That much is enough uh, because in R S six. Uh, Uh, that question is like uh, five more questions were there in R six batch. So that time what will happen means they will ask uh, retina and its layer for uh, five marks. So uh, that time you have to explain first a small introduction to retina, then each and every layer with uh, uh, neurons. Okay. Now as per NCSM, uh, it is not there. So uh, while writing LAQ, you just mention the layers of the retina. Uh, and the retina is again divided into two pigmented and neuro retina okay this is adherent to each other that one word you can mention and uh, name from first to 10 layers according to their order uh, this order you have to maintain that much is enough no need to explain all the uh, cells neurons and all thank you ma'am uh, the next question is Ma'am, what is the most expected question in sensory organs? That uh, uh, most expected means how we can tell, and the, some of the repeated question I can tell that is eyeball. It is repeated question. Even last year also uh, asked eyeball. Uh, they asked and also ear also expected question. These two are the many times it is repeated. It was repeated eyeball and ear. and remaining also uh, it is important you go through all these uh, sense organs okay thank you ma'am the next question is ma'am for lq questions can you say the sub topics to be covered in i topic as there is six pages okay for uh, six pages uh, first you have to give a small introduction okay that is uh, already i mentioned that is first what is eyeball for small one one line you write then location of the eyeball then shape of the eyeball dimensions of the eyeball then you can go for the tunics of the eyeball in that uh, you can make a flow chart that is outer fibrous inner intermediate vascular and inner nervous layer like that and there what are the structures under these layers that also you can make a small flow chart then you explain individually outer fibrous cords sclera and cornea two three uh, uh, important uh, features about this then next middle vascular what are the structures like uh, iris ciliary body choroid then inner retina and all 10 layers like that you mention then you can go for the uh, blood supply and some of the clinical anatomy if you write clinical anatomy after each uh, cord it is well and good or else if you write last also it is okay no problem then uh, you can go for the refractive medias of the eye just name itself it is enough uh, then appendages of the eye and last you can mention uh, extraocular muscles this much is enough for uh, laq 
thank you ma'am thank you so much uh, ma'am another question is um, since no uh, less than 2 weeks are left for the exam ma'am how mm. uh, the students should divide their time table like how many days they should uh, uh, give time for each subject and plan these 14 days what are what are all the uh, things they should do in these 14 days ma'am so in this 14 days you can do the first of all you can do the revision revision of the total subjects hope you almost covered all the session because in this batch they got many periodic assessments almost eight to nine periodic assessment they got then term test two term test they got so almost uh, they covered i hope so the remaining days they can go for the revision and uh, whatever the topics you covered that you can do less time and what you want like new things uh, like this anatomy lecture series you will get some extra things and all uh, that you take more time and in anatomy uh, i can tell uh, because it is uh, 87 marks it is ayurvedic only so you can give more concentration you you can study first all the uh, anatomic anatomy like uh, ayurvedic portions then you will get some confidence because in first paper and second paper half of it is ayurvedic only so first you finish all the ayurvedic portion then you can go for uh, system wise study system wise revision that is better so don't take too much Thank tension you. okay don't take too much nervous uh, Whatever you studied, you can cover and you um, do the revision. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I was about to ask that uh, the same question to you, ma'am. A uh, few students are going through a lot of mental stress. That uh, we all know that uh, this is um, yes, first of yes. a uh, kind of a scheme that was started for this batch. Uh, it was completely different scheme from what previous rs6 and rs5 batches were uh, there from yes. rs5 to rs6 batch there was only removal of viva marks to the main marks it wasn't a much bigger transition but uh, for them uh, rs7 batch it was completely a new transition um, it was completely drafted uh, for almost one or two years taking consults of all the eminent uh, institutions ngos organizations of Irish system so a few students are uh, like uh, they feel um, uh, mentally uh, like um, yes, yes. afraid of the exams ma'am like uh, um, yes, ma'am whether we are not going to make it or not or whether the mcqs how many marks uh, we will get in uh, mcqs because MCQs are some part uh, which are completely different from three mark or five marks, ma'am. Yes, um, exactly. In three mark or five mark, we should uh, if if we write something, at least we should get half of the marks, like two or three yes. marks. We will but get in MCQs, in MCQs, we have to be uh, most precise, ma'am, because one marks yeah, there's uh, they can't give half marks, they can't give uh, anything yes. in that. Ma if, if it is wrong, then it is zero. Yes, ma'am. If it is wrong, means if it is it's zero. If it's correct, means it's clear yes, one. Yeah. Score, so, uh, if score, if they score twenty, means they will get that twenty marks within ten minutes. That is yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there's all possibility of scoring twenty or ten or zero. Uh, that completely different uh, depends on the choice of students, ma'am. Earlier it was different. Like uh, in three marks, even if you write something, uh, we had chance of scoring marks, ma'am. So what so advice you would you like to give them? These three marks, if you draw a sim simple diagram, a rough diagram also, you can score one mark out of three. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That was earlier. So what advice you would like to give? Yes, ma'am. So what advice you would like to give them uh, to face this exam bravely and not to go under any type of mental confusions or disturbance by the surroundings because uh, there are certain students ma'am you got disturbed by uh, like other students so like if someone says i have read th this much and completed this much um they feel some sort of inferior uh, complex ma'am so they uh, start worrying about that that i haven't completed these topics the that student some xyz have completed this many topics so what advice you would like to suggest for the students to um, 
uh, avoid this kind of confusions and to face exams no matter what uh, what the results they'll get ma'am see uh, ne not worry this time because it is uh, first batch okay so it will be most of the time first batch they will make easy questions okay and still time is there okay 14 days are there 13 days are there so they can at least they can go through all the topics at least one once they can go through okay so if they have become nervous everything will go okay so still time is there and don't expect too much uh, heavy questions okay too much uh, tough questions it will be very easy because this is the first batch and uh, mcq again uh, sometimes they can score nicely in mcq also okay and uh, this time ncsm they made everything very uh, clearly systematically they divided so students they can go through the syllabus and they can uh, they can finish each and every topic with the help of syllabus okay so must know must to know when uh, it is there uh, desirable to know some uh, like uh, some systematic arrangements are there so you can go through that one whatever they mention must know they have to study okay then remaining nice to know and desire to know uh, they just read sometimes it may come as mcq okay so within this 13 days they can cover they can cover up all these things no need to worry uh, study properly and uh, time is there okay all the very best okay all the very best once once again okay thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am and thanks for agreeing uh, to be part of this wonderful uh, series with, that we are conducting ma'am uh, thanks for taking part and supporting us and agreeing uh, uh, agreeing to take up a session uh, in our first uh, uh, interaction with you only ma'am uh, you have been a great support not only conducting the session ma'am uh, you personally have arranged uh, like five to six teachers for us ma'am we uh, we had a shortage of five to six teachers um, uh, you gave their contacts and um, helped us in conducting those sessions ma'am um, be it Man- manu sir or kochutresia uh, ma'am uh, like uh, and others also for, uh, five to six contacts you gave and helped us in arranging sessions ma'am uh, me and my whole team at jignasa we are grateful for that ma'am and uh, we uh, uh we extend our deepest uh, uh, gratitude and thanks to you ma'am same and same we, to you also i am thankful to you you give uh, given some this opportunity to me okay as a part of this platform as a part of jignasa uh, really really uh, thank you thank you kartik aunty okay okay ma'am Th- thank you so okay. much ma'am and okay. and uh, really thanks once again ma'am uh, for taking up the session and for clearing all the doubts of the students ma'am. thank you ma'am okay. and we requ- and we look forward to work with you in future also ma'am for various activities of jignasa sure kartik sure thank you thank, thank you so you. much and i'll share the ppt you can share okay at the mcq yes. they can go through that would be really helpful ma'am thank you ma'am okay. now okay. Uh, you. thank you viewers for joining our session today there will be two more sessions coming up tomorrow join us tomorrow at same time thank you guys thank you ma'am.